Hello, everyone. Welcome to Authentic as Fuck podcast. My name is Sun. <laughs> I am a marketer. I help people with marketing and personal branding. And in this podcast, I help entrepreneurs kind of coach through any kind of struggles or problem they might have in their business. So today we have Lucy Moon. Welcome, Lucy. Hi, Sun. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for thank you for joining us. Um, Lucy recently did a, a Wednesday workshop for us, which was awesome. Uh, let's start with kind of where you're from and what you do. Okay, so I basically live between Switzerland and Australia. And what I do, I do something I, I really love. I work with children um, as an educator and I work as holistic counsel and psychotherapist with younger people, which is my my clients are between 20 to 30 years old and that's why my um my passion comes from you know young people and helping them actually um to grow in in really good way <laughs> when you said children i, I was thinking like 10 years old <laughs> no children like actually i'm actually a preschool teacher so i work with children they are okay. from two to uh, two years old till 12 years old so that's one group okay, okay. And then, and then on the side, um, I'm somehow naturally, what happened is actually because I work with Rudolf Steiner School, the teachers and all the adults around me actually pointing out that I'm more counseling the children than anything else. And then I started to study holistic counseling and psychotherapy to actually help children because I naturally do that without, without knowing actually. I had no idea I'm doing it. And then... As it, as it evolved, and I somehow, again, naturally being connected with people who are very young, you know, in their 20s, you know, dealing with their uh, struggles at university, with their families and their relationship and life. And, and I'm in my 40s, so I'm, I'm kind of like I'm the mama of all okay. my, my people I'm taking care of. So, and because I'm not the God. biological mother, then they, they come to me with, questions and, 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 and vulnerabilities that they actually, we don't share it with our parents, you know, these kind of topics. So it naturally evolved like this. And now I'm at the point that I just would like to help more and differently. And that's why, um, you know, you come in and I like night owl nations. It's so helpful to me. Awesome. So you, you have a day job where you teach in school? You mm. teach children? I, I'm not actually teaching. I'm an educator. So I'm basically responsible for after school care and holiday care. I'm the it, fun yeah. teacher where okay. the hard job, the parents do the hard okay. job, the teachers, and I'm just, you know, getting all like this. Like the after school stuff. Mm, yeah. After school care and holiday. And that is where my passion is because I... I strive to actually help children while they're actually playing and they're in a natural element. And also after school care, it sounds so easy, but actually children come so exhausted after school. So, you know, we're dealing with a lot of, you know, mental and emotional turmoil because they're just tired, which is understandable. And they have new activities more and more. So I am I'm responsible for um, for basically the after school care and when there's a holiday care program i work with them from 8 a in the morning till 6 p.m the whole day and that is after so that's your that's kind of like your your day job mm. and then you also teach 20 to 30 year olds <laughs> yeah exactly so the 20 to 30 years old that's that's kind of like right now i'm actually doing therapy that is a very very okay those are your clients mm, okay. these are yeah. my clients but also you know the people i'm working with not naturally I'm, I'm helping them as well so there is always conversation you work with them in person or yeah. we just wanted one privately. or like online oh that's all online well personally as well as online so i've got basically somehow the people i'm helping offline face to face recommended me to their friends you know in different kind of countries which are not working with oh, me because it. when you work with me it's easy to have conversation and to help you and um, these people actually recommend me to their friends and and my one client recommend me further and further and it, it just evolved and now oh, that's good my time management sucks because i want okay. to do everything and uh, so and where 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 are you at now? What, what, what are you struggling with? Okay, I'm struggling with. So thank you so much for asking. So I'm struggling. Uh, that, with, I mean, I think I, I understand kind of your backstory, where beautiful. you are. So what, where, where do you want to go? 
We're, I would love to go. Sure. So my intention is I would love to create online educational platform for young generation to prevent the inner and outer struggle that we we have experienced. You, Gigi, not out, night out, uh, notion, uh, nation. Oh, so you myself. want to do it for the younger? Definitely younger for the for the twenty to How thirty. Young? I would, well, right now I'm working with 20 to 30 years old and it actually works really well. The way I am, the skills I have are really resonating with these, this age group. I don't know if people, older people would resonate with me because I don't have PhD degree. And I always think the older we get, the more sophisticated information we, we ha- have to have. And I am a whole, I'm four years a trained holistic counsel and psychotherapist, but I, I somehow naturally connect with these 20 to 30 years old. So that's my age group. But if, if that naturally evolves more, I don't really care about the age. What I care about that we provide, I can basically teach young generation the skills that we didn't get. So they basically will like, for example, let's just take example. We both we all both know that our childhood and adulthood influence our future. Our the way how we got brought up affected the way how we think, feel, and how we create our life. And that creates certain conditioning, right? Now, some of us grew up without being actually educated about thoughts, feelings, and life in general. So we don't really understand how to work with thoughts and feelings. And now now the struggle comes. When we grew up in very challenging environment, you know, abuse, violence, and very like serious difficulty, even poverty in, in some countries, horrible what's happening there. So we haven't been really educated, myself included. That's why I have actually 100% credit to, to do the work because I'm coming from background, which is, which wasn't really peaceful. So when we grew up in these challenging environments, we actually create shame stories, intrusive thought stories and traumas. And it is very difficult to do well in our life. It's sometimes I actually even think it's impossible. And I've been blessed to meet Rudolf Steiner um, community which is amazing community. Um, I work with other parents and children, which are also very amazing. And and I connected with coaches and therapists and I could transform myself from my trauma and my conditioning into the version who I am right now, where I am 100% saying like, I'm clean. I I do have obviously my shame story and intrusive thoughts, but I understand that. I know how to work with that and I know how to manage it. And then I know how to connect with good people like yourself and Gigi. So basically my my idea of, of, of this whole platform is basically to coach inner work young people and um, example. So basically that stuff that you went through. Exactly. You wanna- Mm-hmm. You want them to learn that at a younger age. Exactly. Because, you know, have a look. Just imagine, like, ex- if we take example and imagine we have a family who is dysfunctional, um, alcohol, misbehavior, or even not, let's just not put any any substances. Let's just put a um, mindset of people who are bringing a little child on this planet. Beautiful, beautiful, pure angel. And these people don't really have the consciousness and the awareness you know of the thoughts feelings and and how the all connects to behavior and creation so if we have this kind of family and they they treat the child they beat up the child they 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 drunk they are they 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 you know taking drugs and the child is all observing it then the parents are constantly having arguments and they violent and they really scary Children all know that we all absorb it. Therefore, we already been conditioned. You know, we have already our love map. Oh, that's how the relationship looks like when people fight, when people don't love each other, when they're not affectionate, when they're not kind to each other. So the child is growing up in this environment, right? So that is one example. Another example is imagine that beautiful child comes to a parent who are 
aware of this, they might have gone through like, like us, <laughs> but we are aware of that. We know what to do. And I would never, ever duplicate what I have experienced in my childhood and adulthood. That's for the parent. Yeah. Exactly. So if well, we let's not go to the parent side because you want to talk. Yeah, to the exactly. Younger crowd. Like, let's not go too much into this because I, I think, I think we all understand this. We, we under, understand, we understand the, our, the, our childhood traumas, the stories we tell ourselves, how it affects us. Mm -hmm. Every, everyone, like, I think the, that part is the part that we understand. Mm -hmm. we, the, the question is, how, do, how, do you, how are you going to deliver that to your audience, right? Exactly, yeah. So let's yeah. go back. Let's, let's go back to the real uh, question again is what what are you struggling with right now i'm struggling what? right now is that i don't know how to create online platform how to structure it that i not only can help these young people but i also mm -hmm. create income because i i would got love it, to do it. this okay. work for free okay uh, but i need so to you also... want to help people and you want to make money no uh, i know <laughs> okay I know. here's what i'm gonna say the number one thing you know how like when when you go on a plane they say you know, put put your own mask on before you you put on other people's mask. Like the same analogy appears here. You're never gonna be able to help somebody else unless you help yourself first. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you that because that turns into resentment. That turns into you know like oh, why am I doing this? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm so like, this is not working. That's gonna go down a very very dark place. Mm -hmm. I've been there. So trust me, do not do that. I. I highly recommend, and this is the reason why at the end of the day, companies like Tom's, Warby Parker, those companies that say, oh, we social cause, and blah, 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 they, they never work out. It always, always turns out to be some scam, always turns out to be some somebody making off on the background. Like it, That always happens, right? Mm. So I think you need to separate the two. You really need to separate the money. And that's what I've always done. And, and that, like I, I always tell people like these creative entrepreneurs all the time it's not the same it might not be the same thing but it is because like your your goal your mission is to help people you want to make a difference right these people they're like uh, some designers and creatives and people like that their mission is to create to 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 be passionate about what they do and things like that right so and then but then they want to also make money with it <laughs> but here's the problem Every day, every hour, you will have to make a decision where, whether it's, okay, am I sacrificing this for this or am I sacrificing this for this, okay? Mm -hmm. And every, every second of day, you're going to be dealing with that conflict all the time. So that's why it's just better to separate the two. The best, the, the best way to actually help people is to make money and then help them, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's it's and and here's a good example of why. For example, um, if I was trying to make money with Night Owl Nation, this is what will happen. Right now, I am taking myself away from Night Owl, my agency, where I used to spend all of my time in my agency, and when I and because I do a lot of the work. I, I am kind of the face of the brand and all of that. That's a huge, significant revenue drop that I'm going to feel. Meaning, by not being at Night Owl full time, you, you can expect that we're losing about forty dollars to $50,000 a month minimum. <laughs> okay? So every month that I'm doing this, every, every month that I show up at Night Owl Nation and do this <laughs> for $5 a month, I am... <laughs> Throwing away forty to fifty thousand dollars a month, right? On top of that, like this doesn't make us any money. Like we have three video editors. <laughs> like it doesn't even pay their salary, okay? Our, our membership costs, okay? On top of that, there's software. There's a like me, both me and Gigi are full time in this thing. Like so, if you if I start thinking about the amount of money that's going into this thing, I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to help people. If I'm actually trying to make money from it, because after almost a year of doing this, I'm gonna be like, "What the fuck? I'm lo I'm losing fifty thousand dollars a, a month. This like these people are like they don't even appreciate me." And blah blah blah. Like like that that resent and it's just not gonna happen because every day there's gonna be decisions like that. Oh, this person wants this help. 
Oh, but uh, do I have time for that? Oh, okay, fine. Oh, like somebody's like, oh, son, oh, son, spent this much time with me. Like, oh yeah, oh, am I happy about that, or am I not happy about that? <laughs> right? Because it cost me X, X, X amount of dollars. Like, just these kind of decisions are gonna happen every single day, all the time. So, this is why in the early days of Night Owl, what I had to do is I had to separate the projects that I do for money versus. You know, one one actually one good advice I, that I got from Murray Folio is like I don't know if it was actually from Murray Folio or not, but what they said was they they either charge full full amount for them there's no discount, so I either charge the full amount or I do it for free. There's no in between because what I and I found that too. Whenever you do in between, those are the nightmare projects. <laughs> The ones that I do for money, just money, those turn out to be very smooth, clear, good. The ones that I just do for because I want to do it always turns out well. The ones where I try to do get, get in between, where I give a discount, those always turn out to be the problem projects. What do you think? Because so? we both want something. Oh, because you both want something, I see. Because in here... I'm giving them exactly what they want for the amount they pay me. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. No mm -hmm. And here, I'm not giving them anything they want. I'm doing everything what I want <laughs> because they're not paying me. <laughs> but here, they feel like I'm paying you, so you should be doing this. But I'm like, but I give you a, a lot of discounts. So you, I, do you understand what I mean? That's yeah, why the absolutely. middle is a, it's it's weird. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like making do something you love. That's why I don't like the whole concept of make money doing what you love. I, saw I don't like the concept of make money and help people at the same time. That lie is, that's such a lie. But how, how whenever, I, I, oh, fuck. whenever I see people that say that, when I look at them, I can actually see that actually, no, you're making a lot of money off of this. <laughs> you're not really helping people. Trust me, I have clients. Like, mm -hmm. I have big clients who do this, so... It's, it's, it's all a lie. <laughs> okay. What I would say is this. At night out, what I had to do is, okay, here's Spotify. Here's American. Here's what happened. When American Red Cross hires us and they, they have a $250,000 budget to build something that we can build in three weeks. <laughs> and we're like, oh, oh, let's make this amazing. Like, let's, do, let's try something new. Something like, oh, let's try something innovative. Oh, let, let's do this, blah, blah, blah. We bring it to them. The project manager is like, oh, no, no, no. Just, can you just do what we told you to do? We, I don't want to take risk and then it doesn't work and then I get fired for it. Mm -hmm. That's how the managers at American Red Cross think. So they, in, in these big budget, high budget, big projects, they just want the safest work possible. So mm -hmm. I realized that early on. So whenever I work with these clients where we make a lot of money from these projects, I realize that I'm never going to be able to do what I want. I'm never going to be able to do anything innovative. And I'm never going to be able to actually make a difference. I'm just, I'm just giving them what they want because they pay the bills. Mm -hmm. I realized that. And then there, are, there were clients who just let, let us do whatever we want because mm -hmm. <laughs> they trust us, right? But I, what I realized is that those clients, the w ones that are willing to take the risks, you know, IBM is not willing to take the risk. Apple is not willing to take the risk. Big companies are not willing to take the risk. You know who's willing to take the risk? Mom and pop shops, startups. So they don't have money. Mm -hmm. So I realized early on that these projects, I'm going to have to do a lot of work for no money. In fact, I'm going to have to lose money on some of these projects. But I make up for it here. So I had to separate the two. I had to see how I had to separate those two. Another thing I had to separate is I had to separate myself from finances. Mm. Right? So, you know, New York Times, I heard this story a long time ago. In New York Times, they have uh, the, the editor-in-chief and then the CFO every quarter going to a conference and have a debate on why making money is more important or why the integrity of the story is more important. Right? They have to make a debate. And if they're if the company's doing really bad and they need to make the money, then CFO will make that argument and they'll win. But if whoever wins that meeting for the next quarter, 
they run the show, right? So if the CFO wins, it's all about advertising, 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 advertising. Oh, you want to run that story? No, this advertiser doesn't like it. No, you can't run it because we need the money. But if the editor in chief run wins that debate for that next quarter, it's all about the integrity of the story. Oh, this advertiser is gonna pull out if we tell the story. I don't care. Let him pull out. We're gonna go with the story. Do you understand what I mean? But you can't do both, mm-hmm. right? So what what we've done at Night Owl is, I take care of. My job is to make the client's project amazing. Gigi's job is to make sure we make a lot of money. Mm. And we completely... So when it comes to billing, like, if if you work with us, you better make sure you pay. Mm. <laughs> and you, you better... I guarantee you it's going to hurt your wallet. Like, I, like I tell uh, all of our clients that, right? Like, if you hire us, it's gonna, you're going to have to write that check that's... A, that, you know, that's that you can afford, but it's not easy to write that check. <laughs> I'm telling you, like the, the amount of money that you're going to have to pay us is going to hurt you a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> OK, <laughs> I tell them that. But yeah, I mean, like. So we, we keep that very clear because I know that I'm going to give it my best. And then Gigi knows that <laughs> she's going to have to collect as much money as, from them as possible. So. Yeah. Like, yeah, there has to be a separation. If if you try to manage, whenever you try to do both, it's not going to work. So that's what I'm going to tell you first. So what I, what I recommend to most people is this. Like what I did. Have a 9 to 5 job that pays the bills, that takes care of all your finances. So you never... In the beginning of Night Owl, I made... Bad decision after bad decision after bad decision because every month I needed to have cash flow coming in. So in order to pay for this, I'm like, okay, well, let's take on this. Okay, uh, this budget is too low, but let's take it on anyway because we got to pay that bill. Mm-hmm. And then this project takes us too long. So now we're busy, but oh, now we got to take on another project to pay for that bill. You see, the when, when you're worried about money, when you're worried about paying bills, you make That's bad horrible. decision after bad decision after yeah. bad decision after bad decision. And, you, and people trust feel me, it, you're not yeah. helping nobody. You're not even helping yourself. Mm. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Totally. So the first thing you have to do is help yourself, right? Mm. Nine to five job or get what we did. What I did first is I had a nine to five job. And then I had a year of runway of where I can freelance without losing. Even if I make zero money that year, I'm fine. Like I had, cause I have one year of, I've, I've saved enough money. So that's when I went on full-time on freelance. And mm-hmm. at the end of that year, actually I ran out of money, <laughs> but then like, because I've invested that year on just putting myself out there and things like that project came after, like towards the end of the year, one project after another after, and then that's how it started going. But I, I, I needed that runway. Right. Mm-hmm. And even when, when it took off and I went from freelancing to night out my agency, it happened again, like where, where we, we were in that place. We were trying to pay the bills, so we were like taking on clients. So what I had to do is I had to look like, okay, for the next six months or next year, like I'm going to disappear. Like I'm, I, I don't have a life. I'm just going to lock myself in this office. <laughs> I'm going to work 18, 20 hours a day every single day to get this thing done and get our runway to a certain point. And that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And then once we got there... That's when we started getting after the big clients. And do you understand what I mean? But totally. without, like, you have to really separate the money from. You want to help people? Just help people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to make money? Make money. But don't try to do both. But then again, when you, when you had the runway, and then you, right now, you, you, you still, how would I say, it? like, you are it's on always going to happen. You helping people, but you're also going to make money from the nation eventually, and and yeah. from other from other projects. So you actually exactly. going to help people because you help us enormously. But I know, you're also but you're, going to if you make, what do I always say? If you think about step ten right now, yeah, yeah. you're never going to get there because while you're busy step, thinking about step ten, step one is to go get a well paying job. Mm. which is what you're not doing. Mm. <laughs> you're never going to get to step 10. Step one is to get a well-paying job. 
mm-hmm. so that you can financially not ever worry about money. Mm-hmm. And then step two is while doing that, start a side hustle where you, you are helping people. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And then step three is to do that long enough to save. <laughs> enough. And then step four is like, and then eventually you get to step 10. But if you keep thinking about step 10, what you're not doing is sitting there and doing step one. <laughs> mm. Which what I'm actually doing, I'm, I'm having a full time job, which I luckily enjoy with children. And I'm also having side hustle, which I'm doing online therapy with young people. And now I'm just at the cross that. I which one is like. the one that makes money? Uh, the children. OK, so just know that I think in your mind, you have to know that you're, that's your job. Mm-hmm. You're, you're doing that for money. Mm-hmm. And this side hustle that you're building right now. For the next one year, at least for the next one year, mm. don't make any money from it. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, don't I mean I like don't the... purposely not make money from it. I know what but you just mean. Yeah. Assume that you're gonna make zero money from it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna try to change the world mm. <laughs> through through your silence. So whoever you meet, anyone you help. You're going to try to make a huge difference for the mm. next year because that's what you want to do, right? And, and I'm, to be honest, I'm actually already doing it for many years. And I've been told, Lucy, and I've been, I'm, I'm actually, I've been told by other people, you have to have a business. Mm. You have to, and I just go, I'm not. At, Let me at, ask you at, this. How long have you been doing it? Uh, I've been doing it. Uh, the online, online clients, i am officially been doing it three years. Okay, here's why. Because th- 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 remember, I, I said do it for one year, right? Yeah. <laughs> I said do it for one year. You've already been doing it for three years. Mm-hmm. And here's why it didn't work. <laughs> it's because you didn't do it for three years. For three years, what you did was, okay, how do I, and, uh, how do I get conversion here? Uh, how, do I, uh, how can I charge here but uh, help people? You were doing half one foot in and one foot out. No, oh, okay. Because okay. you just told me, you just told me, oh, people, they said I have to do this. Oh, these experts say I have to do this. <laughs> yeah, I, like but I that, never, but I never done it. Like people, people been just advising me, you have to build a business, but I never actually focus on that till I actually found you in December. Like I found oh, you in December. Oh, okay. So you never actually try to build that business. No, never. I've been oh. just helping other people, like naturally, because I have so much fun. I have fun with children, and I can see the impact. You know. When a young people come to me, and I give you an example, oh, I, have okay. a, I have a I have a friend, I have a friend who was in really dangerous toxic relationship, and then being with me and helping her like in a therapeutic way. Now three years later, she is going to be married to the most beautiful man on earth, very healthy, kind. Wonderful man. So, so I've been actually helping these three to five years people for free or for a little t- tiny am- amount of money because they didn't feel comfortable to get paid. And I How go, many okay. people? How many people have you worked with so far? Maybe a few thousands, actually. Okay, then I think you're ready. I think you're ready to start your business. And, and then, and then yeah. I found you in December and I just go, oh, oh my goodness. I, okay, I have a, someone I can actually take, take one step at a time and build it and just do that to that other well step. what you need to do is you need to so you've been helping people one-on-one yeah yeah definitely always one for the I last never, three years f- three to five years yeah okay and you've helped over a thousand people over the last three well i i would say so yeah i would say so well yeah, okay so hold, on, hold, hold on let me just no let me just correct it i haven't helped thousand people but i know i've got I've got definitely thousands of hours of helping other people, but I haven't helped like a thousand different people, if that makes sense. So maybe I have. So you've done like a thousand sessions. (laughs) Exactly. Like more than thousand sessions, more than thousand sessions. Definitely. Okay. And how much you charge for those? Well, most of them being for free or some of them being like between... I've got, for example, some clients, you know, in South Africa or India and, and 
I just I just asked them whatever you can pay you don't have and I actually told them you don't have to pay I'm going to help you because I, 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 I cannot even imagine your living scenario where you are because I live in different scenarios I'm very privileged so whatever you want just pay whatever you want and I just tell got them it, and, and they they you know they pay 20 so, yeah, 30 40 50. I think you're at the stage where right now you're like I said, that split is never going to change. Hmm. It, there's always going to be something for money and something for to help. That's hmm. always going to happen. Hmm. So right now, you have until now, what happened was your your school. The school was your for money, mm-hmm. and then this therapy thing was for uh, you know for for you to your you to help. Right hmm. now, what need, needs to happen is the transition has to be from there to this goes out. And within here, half of this has to pay your bills and the half of it has to. So the way I would do it is like this. So at night out, right? Mm. You know, I get paid for speaking. <laughs> I get paid a lot for speaking. I get paid a lot for one-on-one coaching, consultation. <laughs> like, you know, like people who can afford it. They pay me for my time, mm. okay? But then Night Owl Nation doesn't, right? I'm, I make myself available for that, right? So I still have, even within, forget Night Owl, my agency, even within this, I still have the things that pay the bills and the things that doesn't, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I can never be like, I need to make money from Night Owl Nation, these people. I cannot think like that. So right now, what you need to do is you need to clearly define for every person that you're doing, if you're doing one-on-one session, if you want to continue to do one-on-one sessions, Mm. for every person, is this for money or is this, so either charge a lot or do it for free. Mm, I see that, yeah. Don't try to set a price where like, oh, I want to try to make a bargain like this. No, no, no. Either charge like $500 an hour or $0 an hour. Mm. (laughs) Do you get it? Mm-hmm. Totally get it, yeah. So what you're saying is that to keep my 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 job with the children, because that's my bills and luckily also my love, and I somehow transition into the business which I would like. I mean, to- yeah, if you want to build your business, obviously you can't you can't do this while having a job. I mean, in the long run. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. I mean. You mean sorry. Uh, you mean like have a cash flow work to pay the bills and then have side hustle to create actually to get one stage and leave that? Well, that's for now, right? Mm-hmm. But once your business grows, mm-hmm. are you going to still work at the school? I would like to like for me for one day or two days, yeah. Mm. yeah. What if you were making a million dollars a year? I, st- I still would love to be with the children, yeah. And then I would be there for free. I would just come there just to help out like volunteer okay. yeah I, I, I love, I, that. I love yeah, that okay yeah, yeah. that's what okay. that, that's just son this is so difficult because i love the children so much like you can't mm-hmm. imagine but i also can see my gifts and then and how can i help young people and if i can really help them to clear up their conditioning they're going to create healthy relationship they're going to connect with um good people they clear up their shame stories and they're able to then educate their own in then why then just keep doing it then just keep doing it i mean like like, like the, the problem is the the reason why the problem is happening is you're you keep asking the question how do i do this and make money yes. right and it's the same problem that that everybody just like i'm just i'm just so, so sick of it right because everybody comes and tells me that son i don't really care about money like i'm not doing this for money i just want to help people i just want to blah. And then I, I work with them and they're like, oh, how can we make more money here? How can we make, like, like, oh, like, and then like they, they do worry about and they do come to me about, oh, I have this money problem. And I'm like, OK, so you do care about money then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. You know I definitely. I mean? Yeah, totally. And you know what? I definitely care about money. hundred percent. Money is super important for me because that gives me choice and opportunities. I know that. Uh, but I'm just, what I'm basically, my strategy in uh, being with you in Night Owl Nation is to mm-hmm. follow what you teach and and create online 
platform where I would hopefully, you know, my idea is, by the way, to um, to maybe have a Zoom course. I can teach for free just learning, you know, what I have learned in my life. And and then I can even have like a podcast that you have now with me also for free. I don't want you to think like that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this is the problem. People always think that, oh, I would like to have a podcast. I would like to speak. I would like to write a book. That, <laughs> you like to do all those things, not knowing what those things really mean, what the, what they really entail. Do you know? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's yeah, what. Yeah. That's the thing about like. Do you do you know what it means to have a podcast? Do you know like no, and do you I know what see... part of it? No, zero. Like no, do you but... know what part of that you're gonna get pleasure from? Like it's not really what you. A lot of these things, they're not really what you think. It's like saying, see, "Oh, I would like to have a podcast." But blah, blah, blah. that's like saying, "Oh, oh, I would like to write a book," and I would like to, like, here's the thing. Okay, mm-hmm. I think it's this is so important because. If you really, really, really want to help people, you can do that right now. Do you know what I mean? If you just want to focus on helping people without worrying about money, worrying about money at all, you can do that right now. Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's that I think all of us has like a minimum. All of us has a minimum threshold. It's like no, I need I need at least this amount of money <laughs> in order to <laughs> you know maintain my style of living or whatever that I, I need a minimum of this. Otherwise, like, why not just live in the street in a in like in a sleeping bag in a, in a tent and then just do what you love, right? Like, because it's because we have a minimum standard of like living or we want to maintain, right? Mm. So let's not lie about that, and let's so let's figure out a minimum what do we need to do to get here, <laughs> mm. right? And then and then once we are there, like, let's say, okay, are we really happy here? Or do we want more, right? Mm. Like, let's not lie to ourselves about that, right? But let's make sure that's there. And let's not confuse this with this other thing where we want to help people, mm. right? So let's make this happen first. <laughs> and once we're here, step one, then let's worry about step two. I love your strategy. People. So what would you recommend us the next Are you at, Are you happy with step one? <laughs> I'm happy. That's my question. My, Number my, one question. Wait, hold on. What's, what's my best step one? Step one, oh, I've got a cash flow job I love. And I want to build online business to help young people. Like, are you are free. you happy with the the your financial situation right now? Like, you, like if you will never, ever, ever from this point on, you'll like this is your financial situation forever. <laughs> okay? It, mm. It's never going to get better. Are you happy with that? No. Okay, then let's fix that first. (laughs) Because if you're not happy with that, you're not going to be happy with that next year. You're not going to be happy with the year after that. You're not going to be happy. And and while you're trying to help people right now, you're not fixing that. Oh, I see. And now I can see now I'm just connecting the dots. So you're asking me, be happy in the first step, which is your cash flow, and establish yourself to have your, your finances in order. I'm... I'm, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to a point where you literally 100% of your energy is spent on helping people mm-hmm. because you you don't even have to worry about money at all. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to that point, right? So how mm-hmm. can you get to that point? You need money. <laughs> you, two things need to happen. One, you either need enough money that you can not worry about money or two, you need to not care about, you know, like, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know, physical things, like, you know, objects <laughs> that, that that cost money, mm-hmm. so that you don't, re- you really don't care about money, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So those are the only two ways. Like, you either have to go more this way or more this way. So whatever it is, however it's gonna help you, let's fix that first. Mm. Because here's the thing. I think last week I said this. Everyone I know goes through two stages in life, right? They go through the success stage where, you know, like all the Gary V, you know, the David Goggins, like, hey, you wake up in the morning, go hustle, do your ice bath, you know, like, you know, you could, you're, 
your potential is so much greater than where you are now, right? Like, go after it, right? And then there's this message of Gabby and all these other, you know, law of attraction. It's like, you're perfect where you are. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Like, <laughs> no, you're, you're, no you're, like, you're, 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 uh, happiness, all, uh, everything's within you already, right? Those two messages. The reason why that happens is because I think, <laughs> okay, out of, out of, Everyone out there who's who's preaching about oh money's not gonna make you happy, money's not gonna make you happy. I, uh, like I don't care about money, blah, 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 all of this thing. Like every single one of them don't really mean it. Mm. Mm. Okay, the only people that really don't care about money are billionaires. Mm. <laughs> Either billionaires or people who really don't care about money. <laughs> but most people like. Almost everyone that I talk to that says they don't care about money really do care about money. And I think the only way they can learn to not... Because the first lesson in life is to that. How can I get to a point where I really don't care about money? Right? Mm. The only way you can learn that lesson is to have so much money that you realize how that doesn't make you happy. That's the only way. How else are you going to know that? Mm. It's 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 kind of like this, right? I'll give you an analogy. For some, and for everyone, it takes different amount. For some people, it takes a million. For some people, it takes hundred million. For some people, it takes hundred billion. <laughs> Maybe for Elon Musk, it takes a trillion. I don't know, right? But for for everyone, it's a different amount, right? But I'll, I'll put it this way. You know, when I when I first started Night Owl, the reason why I started Night Owl was there was this ten thousand dollar camera that I wanted to buy. Because I wanted to be a filmmaker, okay. So I and I need, so I needed to save ten thousand dollars. So I started. I, I had a job and I started freelancing on the side to save money. Right. Three years later, that turned into Night Owl, my agency. And then a few years later, we became like one of the top agencies in New York. And we got. I got to a point where I can buy hundred of those cameras. I didn't really want one anymore. The camera, like. The thing that I wanted more than anything in this life, <laughs> the ten thousand dollar camera, which is why I started freelancing and all of that. Like six years later, I didn't even want. Now that I can buy a hundred of them, I didn't want it. Do you know what I mean? And this is what I'm. This is the same effect that you, that I think everyone needs to learn. That oh, I just want because a lot of people that I talk to, most of my employees that I talk to, everyone that I talk to, when I. When I ask them like how much money they want and stuff like that, none of them want to be a billionaire. Like, you know what they used to tell me? Oh, like I think I'll be happy if I had like two hundred thousand dollars in the bank. I'm like, really? Like, I guarantee you, if you have two hundred thousand dollars in the bank, you're not going to be happy. I could guarantee you that, right? But until they have that, they won't know that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying whatever that amount is. Let's get you there first. Mm. So you really realize that that's not a worry anymore. And you can really focus on helping people. I can see your point. I you think you just I mean? said something like, you just, something clicked within me. Because are you saying, I'm asking you, how can I actually help the young generation and also create money? It's because actually I'm worried on the other side. I don't have actually enough cash exactly. flow. And that's exactly. what, why the conflict is. But if I would you be You got to put your own mask on. Yeah. But if I would be Zen, then I can just give and give and give. And then I would be like super happy anyway. Yeah. So. I mean, that, that's the thing. Here's the, it's hard for me to teach this lesson to people mm. because, like I said, it's a different threshold. Mm. My threshold happens to be really, really, really low. <laughs> like for my threshold, because I can really care less if me and Gigi were sleeping in a tent outside in the street with our dog. And, you know, we were like going to buy canned food and we were like, as I, I like, I really don't mind that at all. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. I so do. when you really don't care about money, and when you when you can really do what you want to do, when when you what you want to do is so important that you're willing to live in a tent doing it. Mm. But it's see, it's hard for me to get people to to accept that, right? 
because for me, that as Gigi, right? Like we've actually been in moments where we were sleeping in a sleeping bag, going in your sports club to to take take showers, like you know. We've been in those moments, and I've, I've been in times like that in my life, right? And the thing is, none of that scares me. Mm. But what happened was, since then, I've never even come close to that. Mm. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, if you really love something and you go all in without caring for money at all, the money, like, you'll never have to really worry about money. Mm. But nobody really goes all in because they're kind of worried about money, so they go half in. And then they go half in on this. So they don't really make the money and they don't really do what love what they do, but they don't really enjoy what they're doing either. So they they're kind of everyone's kind of stuck in this half place where they don't really love what they're doing and they're not really making money either. But you know, in my case, I, I totally can relate and I, I love your story because my story is I before I sign up to um my holistic counseling psychotherapy, tra- psychotherapy training. Um, I, because I was so enthusiastic and, and in love with that training, I didn't calculate money. If I would, I would never sign up. And all of a sudden I could see my bank account. I couldn't keep up. So what I did is I moved into my car. I put mattress there, my duna and surfboard. And I literally lived in a car. Luckily in Australia, you know, you, you're on the beach. So you go to beach club to have ice cold showers. But I wasn't healthier. I was so healthy because, you know, I got up at like 4.30 that nobody could see me that I live in a car because it's illegal. So I know, I, ex- mm-hmm. yeah. so I know what you're talking I, about money. And, you I know, know I, you okay. I just, I, I, I literally ate like one avocado a day. I really, okay. but I paid when all was my that? How long ago was that? That was uh, 2000, uh, before 2018, 2017, 2018, yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you. So this is one of the hardest things. The reason why, like, there's this, like, one-hit wonders who, who, who has, like, huge hits, like, a movie or an album or something, and then they kind of disappear is reason, like... There's something when you're a starving artist mm. <laughs> where you just put it all in, right? Mm. But then once you get comfortable a little bit and when you have some money, <laughs> you have a comfortable house, you know, like that's when it actually becomes a little bit harder for you to put you put yourself back into that mentality. Yeah, Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So over, like for me, this is what I mean. I, I am not kidding you when I say like I can live in the streets right now. Scary. Is, I haven't changed since I haven't changed since then and whatever like 15 years ago then right like so I, here's what I'm telling you bring yourself back to that moment 2017 2016 whatever right like how how much more passion did you have right? oh I had so much passion and I how much it. more oh, gosh. And, and do you think you lost a little bit of that no, I didn't. No? I no, no, no. I've got, I've got. Even though I've got more passion to help other people because I could see how difficult it is to actually make to educate yourself and to also take care of yourself because it's not possible if you adult mm. to actually. And I'm someone. I'm not. I don't have a credit card. I I don't own any money, and I really paid my psychotherapy school. I have no depth, which I'm so proud of myself, you know, but I had to live in a car and eat like one avocado a day. Totally okay, you know, it's, I just, I just did it. It was just very natural. I just, oh, yeah. I just okay, did okay. it. I didn't really think about it. So, so yeah, so now, if you still have that fire mm, within you, <laughs> if you still have that fire, mm, like right now you're at that stage where you need to do what I told you before, which is you need to have clients that pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> and then you need to have clients that you you need to have a separate product where maybe you can create a your own night owl nation like mm-hmm. a, some sort of a community where you can help them for free mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do you know what i mean and then you just charge high for one-on-one sessions yeah i like that I like do you that. understand what i mean mm-hmm. but you mm-hmm. need to separate these two mm-hmm. so there's a place where all you care about is just helping you i don't care about them, anything yeah. else and, and that helping. is you can go that connects to my mentality because my mentality is to give and give. And if money wouldn't 
Yeah, obviously, I never want to live like like in a car or in a tent. I live in a tent yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, as a girl, yeah, you boys can do that. Can we check in <laughs> into five star hotel? Thank you so much. Uh, so I don't want to go. That's why there. I said we need. We all need our threshold. Like yeah, we yeah. need to make sure our threshold is met. I think. Mm, mm. So for you, I I really think you should separate it because I like that. Out of all the people that you're working with, there are people who can afford you, afford to pay that. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. that you're not mm-hmm. that, uh, that are willing to pay that mm-hmm. i love that i love you just gave me ideas so i'm basically going going to create platform to go if you cannot pay go here if yeah. you can pay go so here. the difference is the people who pay you're giving them one-on-one time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people who don't pay i want you to spend your energy into Spending like what I'm doing at Night Owl Nation, right? Mm-hmm. Just building a community, working with them, to and then figuring out how can I set put together a process to help them. Like mm-hmm. that's what we're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Like we realize that okay, for me to really help them, I think we need to create small groups. Mm-hmm. Oh, like uh, I think we need to create assignments like this. Like we're tweaking every day to figure out what is the best way to help them at scale. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. But the yeah. only way to do that is to spend time with them. But then that was, I was just thinking the uh, other day of you, how do you manage your day? Because my day is so incredibly full. I can't even have relationship because my day is like, I get up at 5 a.m. and uh, I have to sleep by 11. And I, I Oh, am so that's r- the problem. Then. And I'm that, running that, the whole that, day. That, 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 means, that really means that you need to, you need, you need paying clients. Mm. so that you can, <laughs> you, can kind of you know what I mean the mm-hmm. reason why you're mm-hmm. because yeah. that maybe you, what you need, first need to do is like do an inventory of all of your hours that you spent like just track the entire week right mm-hmm. like just write down everything that you did that week mm-hmm. and just track how many hours you're spending on what right mm-hmm. and I guarantee you I bet you you're spending a lot of hours and things that doesn't result in a lot you know, like that's what most people say right like 80% of your result comes from 20% of your efforts, which mm. means <laughs> you're wasting 80% of your effort mm. to get 20% of the results. So try to figure out which 80% you're wasting mm-hmm. with 20 for the result and try to figure out what 20% is bringing you the 20, 80% of the result, mm. right? Mm. And then mm. cut those out so you have some mm. free time. Like whenever somebody says, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time, what that really means is that, oh, that's not important enough for me to make time. I like Do you that. understand what I mean? Mm. So, I don't have time really means it's a problem with prioritization. Mm. And usually the reason why people have problem with prioritization is things like this where, oh, I want to make money and help people. Like, when you do that, it's hard to prioritize. Okay, which one do I want to prioritize? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> mm. Right. Got it. But then would you also, I'm creating now my own website on Squarespace, which gives me headache, by the way. Uh, but anyway, I was just thinking of you. I was, I'm always asking myself, "What would Sun say?" And I, and then mm-hmm. I had, I had, I had an answer from you in my head that this takes all time. You know, set up everything, be ready to. You know, even you know when I when I gave the workshop to night owls, I was falling apart before with my syndrome. I can't, I can't teach. I don't know anything. You know, so what I'm saying is basically you also have to do your work behind the scene in order to actually switch on online. Go, guys, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, this yeah. is what I can deliver. Yeah. And you have to understand when you're working on the business versus yeah. you're working in the business. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But can you give me an example what's on the business and in the business? Yeah. For example, let's say you run a school. <laughs> um, and you're teaching every day you're teaching that's you're working in the business right mm-hmm. working on the business is like you coming up with next year's plan on how you want to market the like do you know what i mean mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. a lot of times what they do what what a lot of people do is they're so busy working in the business that they for, for, forget to work on the business mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like here like if you're a chef right and or that owns a restaurant like that chef is busy just cooking every day that they don't realize that in the long run, well, we need to you know, expand our business and we need to come up with this kind of marketing. Like that's working on the business. Mm-hmm. Cooking is working in the business, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what I mean. Right. Because I need to kind of coach myself when, you know, like I, you know, for example, when I do now the website, then I just kind of go, Lucy. You should set up Calendly. Uh, for? If you want to, okay, here's the, this is why this is so important. Your community thing, don't even think of it as a business. Mm-hmm. So if you really want to help people and you want to use, you want to set aside eight hours a week of your time, volunteer. You're going to volunteer eight hours of your time every week to Actually, just help people. Mm-hmm. By the way, yeah, keep going. Then just do this. Just set up a schedule. Like, okay, every week for one hour a week, we're going to meet on Zoom here. And then start with that, right? Mm. And then see what comes out of that. Oh, a lot of people have this question. Okay, okay. Why don't we do another thing here where we, like, just slowly. But all you're doing is like, okay, I'm just, all of this time that I'm spending here, all I'm doing is just to, I'm throwing it away. I'm volunteering this time to just help my community or whatever it is. Just mm-hmm. think of it like that mm-hmm. and see where that goes. You don't have to turn it into a membership. You don't have to, you don't need a website. You don't need any of that. Mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. That's how Night Owl Nation started. <laughs> okay. Oh, <my laughs> And then on this side, set up a Calendly that says, here's my hourly coaching rate or half an hour coaching rate where they can pay with the credit card and just book it right there, right? So that this, no, this way, you know that if a coaching session book got booked in your calendar, it means they'd already paid for it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm. And then maybe set up like a 10-minute or 15-minute discovery session that's free. Mm. so that if anybody wants to just do a quick discovery call they can do that mm-hmm. and then on the discovery call you will say hey if you want to book more mm-hmm. here you can mm-hmm. you can book it there or something like that right so this is separate and this is separate i, lo- I love that i really love that because i can feel in my heart to go oh i can actually help people and i can do that while i'm actually um also <laughs> making money for people yeah. who wants to pay but that, but you're separating it. That's the thing. I like you know that, that you're making money here, so you don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, what what's gonna happen is sometimes people are gonna hear and they're gonna be like, "Oh no, but I, I don't think I can afford that." Then you say, "Okay, then go join here. Just come mm-hmm. to this Zoom call." Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Totally. I love that. <laughs> I really love. I love that. And then, and then I if mean, somebody from yeah. the membership is like, "Oh, can I just get more one-on-one time with you or something like that?" Then you can say, hey, then can, then go book a call there. Right? Mm-hmm, you, you've mm-hmm. completely separated it. Mm, and you have a good, yeah. You, you And then basically with that strategy, what you do is you actually really are congruent with, with both part of yourself. I, actually, money is important and I need money, yeah. that side. Helping other people is important, that side. And you give and I love that. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've, you've clearly drawn a line there. Mm. which is what most people cannot do mm. when they tell themselves, I need to make money doing what I love. Mm. No, no, no. You mm. need to make money. Mm. And separately, you need to do what you love. Mm. <laughs> and what, ha- what ends up happening is when you try to combine the two, this is what happens. You're going to go into your one- unhappy job. Like, not you, but this is why people go into their unhappy job thinking like I'm miserable, like uh, this, is not, this is not what I want to do, this is meaningless, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing, if my, I get my meaning from uh, supporting my family and you know, putting food on the table and like, making them happy, right? That's where I get my meaning. And I'm not trying to get my meaning from my job, mm. right? I just mm-hmm. want to you know, be, be happy and be, be a kind person, that's my meaning. Then I'm going to this lawyer job, which I you which I would find it miserable if I try to put meaning in it. But because I didn't put any meaning in it, I'm like, oh hey, everyone, oh, you just do your job <laughs> like you normally would, like okay, just see, like you I would go to the, the gym. Mindset, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? But Absolutely. because you're trying to get meaning out of here, it actually makes you miserable. Totally, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think separating that I think is so important. So I would just create like a circle, yeah. like sign up for circle. Yeah. Oh you know God. what happened in the beginning day? <laughs> like when those corporate clients like will, will tell me like, oh, son, no, make the logo bigger. Oh, no, you just use this font. I don't care. Just use this font. 
and I get so mad and so angry. I'm like, oh, no. and I would just be so miserable, right? Mm. But then once I shift my, I'm like, okay, this is my goal is not to make amazing design that innovative design. My goal is to put a huge smile on that client's face. <laughs> oh, and you want to make that? Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Like, you love this now? <laughs> Even though I think this is ugly, but I know he's going to love it. Do you understand what I mean? Absolutely. It's perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that tweak. I really love it. There is so, oh my goodness. I, there is so, it's such a power what he's saying right now, you know, change the, it's a kaleidoscope, right? Change, yeah, yeah. change the perspective and go and have the right perspective. As you said, you know, guys, you can help people do something for free and hear something you charge and separate it. Mm-hmm. And I love how you also teach us to separate it like that. Gigi is looking after the finances and you can focus on, on, yeah. on teaching, you know, which I don't have anybody, but yeah. Yeah, but you can you can do it by setting up that process, mm-hmm. the calendarly here, mm-hmm. and then the yeah. mm-hmm. beautiful. And last question, if I can ask, I'm mm-hmm. building a website, and I'm laughing because when you're going to see that, you're just going to go seriously, Lucy. Uh, <laughs> my <Why>? in- <laughs> because my images are like watercolors. It's mm-hmm. really beautiful, but then I find like a home office watercolors images and. And you know, working with Rudolf Steiner um, community is it's it's all about like I don't know it's it's very gentle all I can say, but it's I've really focused on 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 actually on you know how do I feel when I when I open these sites and I always like I created my Instagram to be on Instagram because my clients ask me to be and then they go Lucy that's not how you create Instagram and I go but I have so much fun they go you have all these watercolors paintings there and I go yeah but I also write something important they go yeah but that's not how it works and I go then I stopped but every time I open my Instagram, I just go, oh, it's so beautiful. But I know that's not the purpose <laughs> because I watched well, your class with the uh, carousels, you know, how how it should takes like one second and you have the images which speaks the words. And I took your Domestica course as well on um, on writing. You know, you taught, what's, to, what, what's your course on Domestica called? Yeah, storytelling. The art of storytelling. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I got it, and then I learned so much. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And I, again, I go, well, Lucy, you're not doing anything. What is some teaching actually? You know, and I don't know how to be, how to not compromise that part of myself, which is the reflection of this design, and yet, you know, connect with other people instead to go, Lucy. It's not how Instagram work. We're going to delete you like okay. this. Okay. So. Here's what I'm going to say to that. A lot of the things that I'm trying to teach is I'm not actually trying. To, I think there are a lot of people out there that are trying to say, here's my method. Here's how, here's my philosophy. Here's blah, 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 blah. The only philosophy that I'm teaching is, is I'm saying, think for yourself. Like when I say, like, really be yourself and all of that, all I'm saying is think for yourself, have your own opinion, blah, 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 blah. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you have that, you can make an Instagram like this. I'm not saying there's one right way to do Instagram. <laughs> like there's a right way to do Instagram for you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in the carousel class, what I specifically said was this. If your goal is to use Instagram's algorithm to quickly reach audience, right? Mm-hmm. Then, so that's the equivalent of making money. If your goal is to make money, okay. If my goal is to get go viral, right? <laughs> then you make carousel like what I told you, right? Mm-hmm. The, the carousel class that I did, right? But if your goal is goal is to build strong relationships, strong deep relationship mm-hmm. with people, mm-hmm. that's not necessarily the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, and totally. that's why I do both because those v- videos that I put out doesn't get a lot of views. There are things, a lot of things that I do that doesn't bring me money or followers or reach, mm-hmm. but I do it because for different purposes is mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. build relationship with my audience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there are posts that I do like today's, which I'm doing because I want to reach more audience. Mm-hmm. So I really think it, it has to do with um, 
you know knowing what like what what am i doing the, it's the perspective purpose, right yeah. like, and then your purpose yeah. what purpose do i have yeah. um, i'm doing this what's yeah. the purpose and i think with you what you're doing is that you're actually catching so many fish you know you the meaningful the you know just to be, like I'm someone who wants to create meaningful, deep relationship. I, I'm not on social media. I'm not interested whatsoever. I For you, I actually think you should keep doing the watercolor thing. Oh, thank you, thank you. Because that is here's the thing, right? Here's what I here. Okay, maybe I can end with this. Yes. <clears throat> so every one of us, we might think that we're this unique individual that there's not a single human on earth like us, right? But that's not true. Like, if there's something that you look at and you're like, oh, it's so pretty. I, I love it. <laughs> like, I guarantee you there's at least a million people on this earth with 7 billion people. There's at least a million people oh. <laughs> who also feels that. Oh, yeah? thank you. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. so when I look at like these sneakers on Instagram and I'm like, I don't get it. Like, why would anybody go wait in line for 24 hours for that? Wow. Wow. But then obviously there are other people who's going crazy. So what I'm saying is this. Whenever mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with something and I think that I'm, on, I'm the only human on this earth that's obsessed with this, this, I guarantee you you're not. There's at least a million people out there who's also obsessed with that. Mm. Oh, but the thing you. is, I think a lot of people do what you do, which is even though you're obsessed with it, you're like, oh, I'm not going to do it because nobody else cares. I was so close to not to do that. Like, literally, I created a website and then I have this beautiful picture. You would laugh. I leave it there. You would laugh so much. And I just go. And then I, I was classical. I just research other websites and I go, Lucy, nobody is doing it. You have to delete it. You're crazy. And I go, no, I need to keep this is this is who I am actually this is yeah. really like a when you open my Instagram tells you so much about my personality and my character and I want to keep like you said something yeah. in in carousel in last class that you not it was so beautiful what you, you said something like if you're going to compromise and you you're going to lose yourself don't compromise and you said you never compromise yourself and I love that yeah, yeah. because because we all are unique and we have our gifts and it's so difficult in this world to actually follow ourselves because there's always, we always compare ourselves naturally. And that is so sad instead to go, no, I've got something so beautiful to offer all of us. Let's just tap into that and let it shine. You know, you have to go all in. You can't yeah, yeah. be, you can't feel shameful of it or like oh, other people going to judge me for mm -hmm. it. Like mm -hmm. you can't have any, because once you start having that, you're going to sacrifice that for something else. And then now it becomes something that nobody mm -hmm. wants. Like Wolf, Whereas if you, you know? Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Wolf, when he did the carousel, and you said something like, yeah, yeah, exactly, he, yeah. should, he should just draw it. And I go, oh my God, that yeah. is fantastic. And he laughed yeah. it. He goes, this yeah. is, that is such a great idea. And I just kind of go, yeah. It's, and I, you know, I see Wolf on, in our community. And I, when I saw his, his, instagram i go oh my god yeah i can see yeah, yeah, yeah. that's him actually you know and so, so yeah. exactly like that and that's the reason why okay here's what i'll say if you try to adjust yourself for the main crowd mainstream mm -hmm. crowd yes you'll get that reach but it's going to be very shallow mm. right if if i see something cool on instagram ooh, ooh, like i'm not building any deep relationship with that creator mm. <laughs> you know what i mean mm. But when you do really just be you and you put those out there, yeah, it's not going to get that reach. It's going to take a really long time for you to go out and fa find all the people, the weird people that are like you, mm. right? Mm. It's going to take long, longer mm. time to do that, that mm. are find that unique thing. Mm. But once that happens, it's a much stronger community. Mm. And, it, mm. and when you look at uh, the flat earth community, that's a great example of it, right? Because... Think about it. Like, think about how, if you believe in the Earth is flat, think about how ninety nine point nine percent of the world will would turn against you, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's enough people that believed in this that that they've just united and they they're stronger than like any other community. Mm -hmm. And so the more the more unique it is, the more weird you think it is, the more you. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that you actually have to. 
What do you think? How can a volunteer in in Night Out Nation? You, I know that you guys ask for volunteers, and I was immediately going, I would love to do that. And I go, I look at my schedule, and I go, Lucy, are you crazy? You can't even call your <laughs> friend to have a conversation with her because you have no time. The first thing you should do is do the inventory of your week, <laughs> okay, and see where you're spending time mm-hmm. that you know. Like you can cut down on that. That mm-hmm. is not providing results or something like that. And then, and then I, and then I connect with the girls and go and tell them this is what I can commit and tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After that, you can um, reach out to either Ellie or yeah, Tabitha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I would love to be with you guys so much, but I just go like. Oh we would love God. to have you yeah. oh when God. you're ready. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. That's been so helpful. I'm so grateful thank for you, you guys. Thank you so much for um, <laughs> coming on today and being so vulnerable and sharing everything. Oh. It's been like it's been awesome. Thank Hopefully you. it brought a, a lot of clarity for you and everyone Absolutely. listening. Me too, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for thank listening. You. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Lucy. Thank and you. I'll put all of Lucy's information on the description. Cheers!